I found with uh, these uh, co-creation uh, um, relationships is, first off, organizational buy-in from all parties. If you're the manufacturer, make sure your organization is willing to invest the time to, uh, to explore this idea. If you're a distributor, make sure you're gonna support this and it's gonna go through. You can develop the best product, get it out there, but if you're not support, it's not going to really operate. You need to have support that you're gonna be behind this and everything you put it. If anywhere in that chain, the support breaks down, you will not have an effective launch. It might be a great product, but it might not launch because people are not behind it. A big one for saving time and also sparking ideas, I'm a big I'm a fan of is on-site ideation um, and development. So go out to the manufacturer facility. Some people have test kitchens. If you don't have a test kitchen, that's not a big deal too. Look at what the actual manufacturing process is and walk through it. Um, you can look at PowerPoint and things like that. That doesn't quite translate. I know a lot of my greatest ideas are when I walk through a facility and I say, oh, you're doing this? Well, at this point, we do this and then you can make tweaks within their capabilities. I probably the best example I've had on co-creation is we, we uh, were working with uh, on uh, uh, a uh, frozen thaw and serve um, Santa Bakery on Muffin Land. There are premium muffins, um, they're upscale, they have uh, uh, um, craft paper to look up and uh, you know, lots of lots of particulate and it's really unique flavors in that and it was probably one of the, the best collaboration co-creation um, projects I've worked in it wasn't there wasn't one person on the team that said hey this is my idea we're driving where we all work together I took insights from from different trends and thoughts and put together some concepts we had um, more of our analyst people on our team look at existing sales and, and, and look at existing business to have that modify and then really worked with the manufacturer to to figure out what that price point we need, we need to be at and an engineer with it and it wasn't one person dictating um, exactly what it has to be. Um, lots of manufacturers I've worked with, they had one compliment I get is when you go in there, oh you don't I like working with the chef because you don't remind me of the chef. So we get in there with our videos, and I know I'm guilty of this too. And you go in, and here's my recipe that I wrote up. I want you to make this exactly. Well, what you're making back in the house, but it does not come up the same until you scale it up. So throw that idea as the concept, and then trust the manufacturer to make it as close to that within those requirements. So really trust the party. So with that Sienna Bakery lineup, we came out with about 10 different um, flavors. And then we had one of them that was kind of iffy if we're gonna move forward with it. It didn't fit the lineup with a, uh, a honey butter, corn, um, and roasted red pepper muffin. So but this is in a lineup with uh, blueberry muffins and things like that. So it's a little different, but is that the right fit? And we actually won a PLMA award, um, Salute Excellence Award last year on it. And it was really good, it's, it's, it's gone over well in multiple applications. So that's one where it's done real well. Others, um, I like to do is, so we're gonna innovate. You find different suppliers that you have really good partnerships with you can trust, and so they have some base business that they wanna work with you to, and if you have some of that, that there's maybe a little more openness to work on these crazy, my crazy ideas, I would say my, my mad chef things, because there's some area to balance that risk in it. And what I, I like to do is, once again, I'll gather my trend information, however it is, or what the project is, try to get buy-in, from our category team internally to say, hey, are you okay with well, taking the handcuffs on me and let me just kind of go with, with this supplier and see what we can come up with. So then we'll have conference calls on our trends and what we're thinking we would take their input by and but figure out from those ideas what is really realistic that we can do, either ingredients or production constraints, um, get some ideas together, and then I'll, I'll go out to their facility and we'll sit there for a few days and we will just tweak and run through bed samples and see what we get out of it. Um, because you get some concepts, oh, it's close, we can tweak here and here, and some will tweak a little bit, and it's like, there really isn't an identity, we're not getting there, so let's scratch that, let's move to the side, and maybe out of 20 products that we're messing around with, we get five that we bring back, and it's more of them presenting to the internal teams. Hey, this is yay or nay, not, hey, what do you tweak for your personal preference? Do you want to go with it or not? And I move along that way, and I found that has worked really well, and you can, do innovation within within the constraints. Uh, I know lots of manufacturers I partner with, there's a big issue of us chefs can be very creative and get distracted by 
something shiny out there, or a squirrel run by, let's go on that project. So you can, and I'm, I'm totally good at my job because I am all over the place, but, but you get out there and you want them, hey, source this unique chili paste or ingredient in here, and then because it's manufactured, you're, you're ordering suck your minute more to get to a cost you need so much stock and then sell and not using it for anything else so there's some more risk so if you could use instead of this exotic chili paste you can use three or four blends of more common peppers and get sort of the same feel for the food service it is a lot more shoot from the hip um, it, especially when you're validating is one of the one of the issues i have is there, there's no, there's not really one human source, so it's finding as many different sources as you, as you can out there. Um, so you look for the technology, and NPV, and things like that. A lot of that is fairly high level, and you're not going to get refined, you can find flavors and how they do it. And what I'll look at, is everyone here familiar with, with like technology, or have you used um, the, 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 the menu finder where you can look at certain items? So I'll look at, let's say I'm going to look at salad dressing. So I'll pick the salad dressing or salad category, and then I'll look at ingredients and flavors that pop up, and I'll document what the most popular are. I might even look at different, instead of the entire market, look at individual markets to see how there's differences there, and then try to incorporate that. I use a lot of upgrade familiar, familiarity with things and products that exist out there. Or we also, we are fortunate enough in the Gordon Food Service, we also have Chef Jerry, he's a speaker at the conference, so he is more of our customer facing chef. I'm on the, uh, the product procurement side. And he goes out every year and puts a team together and does a, a annual trends report where he looks at Chicago, New York, and uh, LA. And every year they go through it and he gets this list of restaurants that have been open less than a year and are getting lots of but I don't even know how it really puts this together. It's quite amazing how to find some of these places. There's some social media and networking that. And we will go into a city and it's up. You're in there for a week and it's 10 restaurants a day um, for seven days. You're going from morning to night and you're going in and you're ordering everything on the menu and documenting, sampling, and you kind of look for these three big markets, which are typically the leaders on trends in, in, in North America. Um, what are some similarities? that you can pull from that. That's typically the next trend we're trying to predict, but you're still, it's, there's risk involved. It's not solid. You might pick something that never catches on, but you're hoping that you're there and you correlate it with, with some other information out there. Either there's products you're successful with, so how can you modify that, or um, or through MPV and that there. But it's really, it really is shoot from the hip. Find as many different sources as you can. Um, and a lot of what I find is was I find all this data and I put it together and then I still use my creative, like I'm back in the house coming up with a, with a, with a special for the night and see how can I can find those together and something that'll, that'll sell. And, and if you can validate with other partners, so with, with, with your manufacturer, with your distributors, what do they think in the market? Because they'll be in touch with different people than you are. Or at the operator level with customers and figure out a way to do some product testing. And, and that can help mitigate some of that risk. That, Really, food services is, is really shooting the hip, and it's, it's a bigger struggle than on retail, where I think there's a lot more detailed information available.